All right. So I showed you some of my inspirations. These are the three I posted. And now I've posted into Proving Ground number two, which you'll find under assignments. It's all part of this unit, which I think is unit nine, I want to say. It's on our course outline. So you'll find it under assignments this way. Scrolling down, you'll see that assignment four is our vector logo, but part of it is proving ground number two. And so first, before we work on our logo, we have to draw our thumbnail sketches and post them here. This is a proving ground. It's worth one and a half points if you meet the rubric. And then we also have a link to the slides that I've been showing you about vectors versus rasters, which is your question of the day, about professional examples of different logos and these three approaches. And then I just added this slide, which shows what you take the refined sketch and then you turn it into the finished logo. And the finished logo is going to look a lot like your refined sketch, but just be a whole lot cleaner because it will be a vector. And then we can add a color version to our vector. So when you're reviewing other people's work and commenting on it as part of your proving ground, I want you to look at their sketches, like for instance, looking at these sketches and say which one's going to make the strongest, clear, versatile, and engaging black shape logo. That's what we're going for. So it might be a really intricate, beautiful drawing, something like this, but that does not translate well into a logo, right? Because it's not scalable. And we'll be learning how to use vectors for line art in our next assignment. So think this, not this. So to finish off the proving ground, which is our next step today, which we want to get done so we can start uh, moving towards a refined sketch, we post our proving ground, and then we have to wait for other people to post so that we can respond to theirs. So we've got some nice examples here, and they're all labeled symmetrical, dynamic, play of positive and negative space. And we start to have some replies. So you just hit reply underneath and comment on at least one other student making a clear indication for which one you prefer. And once you've done that, you've met both of the rubric criteria, sorry for all the scrolling, for your proving graph, right? So make sure you post three or more thumbnails that show all three approaches to get that full, that full point. And in order to post your response and get full points, you want to make sure in your response you indicate a clear preference and a written comment or critique, right? So not just say, I like this one, but also give a reason for why. And that's why it helps to label them so we can easily see what you're talking about. Do not just say, I love all your work, it's amazing. That's great, but that won't give you full, full credit and it's not as helpful to your fellow student. They want to know which approach is, is working for their audience. Because not only are you students at NLC, you also represent the student body of NLC, who eventually will be who these symbols are for in our Veterans Center. All right. Once you've gotten that, you can look at your comments and you can decide which approach you want to pers pursue. So I am going to pursue my central symmetrical approach, this one. And even if all the comments say, whoops, I don't want to do that. Even if all the comments from your fellow students say, do your positive negative space one, but you hate your positive negative space one, you are ultimately the designer, right? You're the one who's going to have to slave through making this in a vector program, which is a lot harder than than it seems, especially if you haven't done it before. So you get to make the final say about which one you turn into a refined sketch. 
But if everyone said, well, I really like your dynamic one, then maybe I would try to make my refined sketch reflect something that was in my dynamic one. So do, do consider all of the input you get. All right, so I'm going to open up my folder, and I'm going to create a proving ground number two folder. This is just for sketches. And then I'm going to put my sketches into the, into that folder. So if you posted it just from your camera phone, you can move it right from Canvas into your assignment folder. And now I'm done with, with proving ground number two once I've written a comment, right? These are my sketches. Now from this, you're going to refine one of these. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this, pull it out, and then make an assignment for folder. This is for my vector logo. And though we have a few days to work on this, we're going to need all of them. I'm going to mark it as yellow because this is what I'm working on. And we start with your thumbnail sketches, but I am going to square it down to this. But this is not a refined sketch. So how do I turn this into a refined sketch? Well, I'm going to use all my compositing skills. I'm going to go ahead and open it up with Photoshop. And what does this process look like? It is this process, right? Going from this to this. Understanding how to turn it into black shapes. So one way I can do it in Photoshop is I can create a new layer right on top of my sketch. And I can just simply use the brush and start filling in those shapes. This is kind of like that blue line test, which I'll do with non-photo blue pencil on photocopies if I'm doing it traditionally. And because this is central symmetrical, I'm going to show you a nice little trick in the refined sketching. So I'm using my tablet and a pressure sensitive brush that's hard edged. And I'm just coloring in the black shapes. But because it's central symmetrical, I'm only going to color in the shapes on one half of it. And then I will use digital duplicates to duplicate and flip horizontally the other half. This is not designing a vector, but this is giving you your sketch, your refined sketch for your vector. I could even use the shape tools if I wanted to, but that would take a lot longer. Just like we did with exercise two. Whoops, I don't need to do that. Okay. And it's not like your refined sketch needs to be really clean, but what it needs to be is a clear plan for what you're going to do with your vector cutouts. So I'm just going to, because I'm doing central symmetrical and I want it to match side to side, all these elements which match side to side, everything here so far, except for the head, which is going to be facing the side, inspired by that, that navy temporary logo. I'm going to duplicate Command-J, then Command-T to free transform, and then flip horizontal, and then hold down Shift and move. And now I can take that head
and I'm going to play with it. So this is the other advantage of doing your refined sketch as a digital. I can stretch this a little bit so it looks a little bit more like Nico's head. I can taper it, maybe distort it. These are all things you're going to really miss <laughs> from the raster program when we start having to be limited to a vector. I can warp it just to get the best plan we can. All right. And then if I want a perfect circle for the eye, if I want an eye, I can use the circular marquee tool, hold down shift, and place that circle, and then just delete it. You know, a nice exact cutout. Now, what am I missing? I'm missing the little piece laurel. Because I have a pacifist background for my personality. So though I'm very appreciative of veterans' service, I have a lot of service members in my family. I am honoring the efforts to keep peace, especially once they are out of the military service and are private citizens again and veterans. And veterans do a lot in our community for like disaster relief, using the skills they learned in military service towards the public good. Those are the kind of things that our veteran center will support along with the continuing education of veterans. These terrible storms and hurricanes that have hit one of the biggest uh, relief organizations is Project Rubicon, which is all led by veterans using military schools, skills to help kind of rebuild domestically in peacetime. All right, so this might be my refined sketch, right? And I can still tighten it up. There'll be little things, but a lot of that would get tightened up as a, as a vector too. So I like might trim this. But I want your refined sketch to really indicate the black shapes. And you can do this by hand as well and just take a photo of it. But this sketch is what we're get, then going to bring into Adobe Illustrator to start tracing our vectors. And I could composite it as well. I could go from my references, but I'm going to show you why I don't think that's the best, the best option for me. The reason we did compositing first is because you can always use these skills to help with your ideas. So I'm going to increase my canvas size, make this a lot taller. And then I'm going to bring down the official symbol from the Navy. Which is a vector, but I just am doing a, a raster version from it online. You, it's, it's hard to find vectors online except through places like Pixabay. And then I could take, let's say, the head of Nico from this, right, and then use my compositing skills. I know many of you like to use Canva and other kind of template based layout programs, which already have a lot of symbols built into them, kind of like the vector shape tools in PhotoP. But when you're using pre-designed assets, 
sometimes they can really limit 